Right, so welcome to Red's midweek service. It's Thursday. I'm Thirsty James. Thursday. Yeah, I'm James. This is Scott. Cheers. On the beer already, yeah? Mm. Uh, it's been a long it. day. Yeah. Uh, right, so um, today we have got a couple of different things for us, haven't we? Uh, we've got a, a, sh- a, a lot. A lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we've, we've got a lot today. I won't say anything. Don't say anything. We've got a lot today. James has kindly been on a shopping spree today. Uh, we've gone a little bit bigger. Uh, we're not doing a drink today. We're going purely on the grub side. We're going to mess up two food dishes instead of uh, food dish kind of drink. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, you, you might see some quite colourful stuff here, um, particularly these, uh, these bags of, uh, of crisps over here. So you're probably thinking, why the hell have we got these things? But I'll explain to you all in good time. So what we're doing today is we're going to make a little starter that goes really well with, uh, with beer. Uh, they call frickles, fried pickles. And uh, we're doing that with did our you know dirt that? sauce. Yes, yeah, so did we did that. Did we actually know. found that in New York uh, years and years and years ago and brought it back to the UK. And it's been a massive seller uh, in the restaurant since then. It's also a secret menu order for those guys that come back to our restaurants whenever they do open. Uh, so we've got, uh, we've got frickles and dirty sauce. And then I'm, I'm going to make you guys uh, did some... You say dirty sauce? Dirty sauce. We're going to make you call it. Dirty sauce. You, yeah, yeah. You guys. Some people call it dirty mayo. Some people call it dirty sauce. We call it dirty sauce. It's yeah. a product that we have in all of the supermarkets. Um, if you can find it. But today, rather than buying it in store, we're going to be making it in house. Actually, can I just give you a bit of an update on the sauces? So <coughs> we've got quite a lot of emails in from people saying I can't get this sauce, I can't get that sauce. We've been selling like so much sauce. Like hotcakes. Yeah, yeah. Or like hot. The sauce. sauces. Hot sauces. Hot sauces. Yeah. 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 Um, so <clears throat> I was talking to the suppliers today and we're getting some new bottles in, some new lids coming in from somewhere in the world. Uh, so hopefully the stocks will be getting ramped back up over the course of the next couple of weeks. So I do apologize if you've not been able to get your favorite sauce, but we are trying our best to get it back into the stores. But obviously because everyone's at home, consumption's gone up massively, which means that everyone's been buying more and more sauce. So which is a good thing, I suppose, but uh, so for now you can follow your complex instructions and make your own. They are very complex, but you'll, you'll enjoy it. I'll make sure it's nice and fun. Okay, so we've got frickles and dirty sauce happening, or dirty mayo, depending on what you prefer. Uh, then we're also going to be doing a, uh, a really classic Red's dish, and it's, it's our pit beans. Pit beans are world famous, uh, in here, in, here in the UK anyway, um, and uh, I'm doing these ones so that so you can do them. <laughs> I'm doing them. Uh, I'm doing a, a recipe that you guys can do pretty easily at home. Uh, in your oven. You don't need to do it on a smoker. We cook our, um, our pit beans underneath pork and brisket overnight so all the goodness comes down, it rains down into the pit beans and, uh, and you get this really nice layer of, uh, of kind of meat juices that you get from the brisket and the pork. But today I'm just going to be putting in uh, some, uh, some chopped, uh, chopped meat, you can pick what you want, and uh, I'm going to be cooking it in the oven. It's a lot easier for you guys. So, uh, so I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll start with, um, we'll start with some of the ingredients because you guys have probably seen on Insta and Facebook that we put a list out, but I just want to remind I you what you need. You forgot to put the list uh, out. Yeah, I was going to put the list out, but it was massive. And it's I not. No one's going to have all this stuff, so no one's going to cook along. I don't know so why. I, I, I don't know why I do all this work. I don't. <sighs> it's depressing. All right then. Like, okay, so what we're going to do is just going to do a, a quick rundown on what you are going to need to do is make your own barbecue rub. It's a basic dry rub that we make. Uh, it's in our book. Let there be meat available it was also online. Posted a couple of weeks ago. It is, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to show you guys how to make a dry rub. And the reason why we're making a dry rub today is that in the future of the next few weeks and months, we're going to use that bad boy in some of the products and some of the smoking techniques that we're going to show you on, uh, on, on social. So, uh, so take heed. This is a really good kind of basic rub. And we're going to kind of, we're going to make it, a, it's, it's more of a pork rib rub. So it's got a kind of sweetness to it uh, than, than, a, than a pork shoulder rub. If you haven't got heed, can you take anything else? Uh, head. Head works, yeah. Right, uh, Joe, do you want to come down here quickly and have a little look-see? Right, so I've got, um, I've got a, sh- uh, a lot of uh, ingredients here. The main thing that you can see here in terms of the bulk is, is brown sugar. Brown sugar is a really, really key ingredient when it comes to a rub. Uh, you've also got a lot of salt. Uh, you've got a lot of sugar. Uh, but that's just caster sugar. It kind of stops it from clumping. Uh, smoked paprika, KN, I think. Uh, we've got some, um, some garlic uh, powder. We've got some onion powder. We've got some ground coriander. Uh, we've got some uh, uh, marjoram, some parsley, and some sage. So we put all of this stuff in there, in this, uh, in this sugar here, and we kind of give it a, a really good rub through with our fingers. You want to make sure that you're rubbing everything through nice and, uh, nice and uh, evenly because you don't want to have clumps of certain flavors on those meats. So I'm going to show you guys how to just put it all together, make it all. We put it, put it aside, put it in a, uh, in a refrigerated uh, tub, uh, and you keep it there for weeks on end and it'll just keep you going, you know, actually you don't put it in the fridge, you put it in a dry, uh, dark corner of your cupboard. If you put it in your fridge, it's going to go really hard, so I, I do apologise. Right then, do you want to uh, just come and join me over here for a quick sesh on how to build your own, uh, 
your own little barbecue basic rub. So okay. I'm going to do the uh, iPad today. And uh, if we've got any questions from people, send it through. Um, I'll be answering questions on Instagram. Um, so if you want to any comments, any questions, anything like that, just give us a shout and I'll uh, try and make sure we get to it. Cool, right, so there's about 250 grams of that brown sugar. I'm gonna go in with uh, 125 of caster sugar. I'm gonna go in with uh, 125 of paprika. I'm gonna go in with um, some cayenne powder, powder, powder as well. I'm not gonna do that. Cayenne and, pa and paprika, got loads of salt. Yeah, put it over there, it's fine. Got loads of black pepper as well. And then you've got your marjoram, your uh, white pepper, we like pepper. Do you think that's actually going to have, that white pepper and the margarine being so tiny is going to have much of an effect? This is delicate barbecue, this James. You can't mess, well, you can't mess with science. This is, this is well, proven. Do you want to tell people what you're putting in? Uh, no, because I, I, you've got, you're you taking the list away from me. <laughs> <laughs> that's your ground coriander. And then we've got lots, oh, of, lots of garlic powder in there. We love garlic powder. And then, uh, and then a cayenne and all that type of stuff. And all we're going to do is just give it a really good rub around. I'm just going to lean over here so you guys can see the level of effort that goes into this. That's the money shot. Oh yeah, look at that. So all those hard bits of, um, of brown sugar that have been in your store cupboard or my, our store cupboard here, they all need breaking down. And then what you're gonna do is just keep working that through five minutes or so, make sure it's all like, you don't wanna have these big clumps in here. I'm not gonna work through it right now. It's super boring to watch. But the idea is that you're gonna be using this dry rub in your pit beans. And your pit beans are gonna sing like a canary because of this thing. Right, I'm not going to break that up now, but we've got that. That's our barbecue basic rub done, and, and that's what we would use on our ribs, uh, as an example, in, uh, in the restaurants. Um, it's, again, it's a, bit, it's a bit spicy, it's a bit sweet. But you can adjust it however And salty. You yeah, you can adjust it for, what, for whatever, you, whatever you want to do it for. I mean, I would say less, thank you, I would say less sugar if you want to do a longer smoke um, for, for when you do use this. So this is for short smokes, kind of four to five hours. It's not going to burn because it's got more salt in it. And, a, and, and, a, and so it's got salt in it and a bit more sugar. If you're gonna do a long smoke, like on your pork shoulder, you wanna have less sugar and a bit more salt. That way it doesn't burn. Okay, so that's good to go. Do you want me to break that up while you're talking? Yeah, if you can, have you got some gloves? That's a great idea. Finally, a bit of help in the kitchen. Right, so what we're gonna do, <laughs> what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna show you guys how to make your, your pit beans. Here's the ingredients. I mean, there's a lot going on here, guys, but it is totally necessary for you to watch this. So is it, so when we, uh, when we first go to America, eight years ago, nine years ago? Uh, well, it was about, uh, probably about a year before we, we, we launched Call Lane in Le yeah, uh, Leeds, so that's right? 2011. And um, we went to all these different barbecue places and there was the one major thing that we brought back, wasn't it, that we have to do pit beans. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, so, so it's, a, it's, a, a bar it's a barbecue necessity if you are into, into barbecue. It's a staple. Staple. Yeah. A staple. So, so yeah, we've got, should I go through the ingredients for you guys so you can see what's going in? Oh, go on, carry on. No, I was just saying that actually, now that we've been back to America like a million times, yeah, I true. think our pit beans are probably some of the best that we've ever had. I'm not saying that because it's us, but... Some of them are just like slurry, aren't they? And there's no yeah. like chunks in it. It's just like yeah. gravy with beans. And it's a really good product. If you, if, you, if, you, if you run a smokehouse restaurant, it's a really good product because you can put all the stuff that you don't sell into that product and it just elevates the flavor of it because you put in really expensive brisket in there as an example. Today, we're not using brisket. We are going to go purely on the pork front. But you could use roast beef from a... Yeah, from a, Sunday, dinner. from a Sausages. Sunday dinner. Yeah, like pick that. Pick out the skin. Yeah, pick out the skin. That gets a little bit, uh, it gets a little a bit, bit tough. steak. And then yeah, that's not, not nice and cheap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you're right. Stuff. This is barbecue is cheap, so let's try and keep it cheap. I've I've actually pulled some ribs here that we that we had in the freezer, uh, which is a, an a, it's perfectly a, uh, adequate for this dish as well. Right, come on down here, Joe. We'll have a little uh, a little shifty around some of these uh, these these ingredients. So I've got four cans of your favourite baked beans in there. Two of the cans I have decanted this lovely juice. So I've only got half of the juice in there that I should do, right? So two cans, full juice, two cans, no juice. And the reason why is because it gets a little bit loose if you, had all that, if you uh, have all that Loosey juice juicy. in there. Loosey juicy. Uh, and then we've got, uh, we've got a load of brown sugar here. Um, the brown sugar is uh, that thing that's going to really make it sweet. I've also then got another, uh, another type of sugar. Anyone know what this might be? James, you might know by the dark color of that sugar. That is um, molasses. Molasses. The very nice. Cocaine of sugars. Love it. Very good indeed. Okay. And then we've also got some pepper. Um, let me just double check. I want to make sure I've got the right ingredients here. Uh, I've got two cloves of garlic. 
was heavy on the ingredients. Very heavy, very heavy. But it's going to be done. Um, and then we've got uh, some smoked paprika here. Uh, there's about two tablespoons there. I've gone quite heavy on the smoked paprika because we're not smoking it. We are putting it inside an oven. Uh, I then got some, um, some onion powder. Onion powder is really nice. Kind of gives it that nice earthy sweetness. I've also got another sweet product here, which is, uh, which is just some chopped up, a half a chopped up white onion. I've, uh, I've sauteed it in a little bit of olive oil. Nothing too crazy. Uh, and you want to cook that off before you put all the ingredients in, the, in this big bowl over here. I've also got, I've also got uh, a red bell pepper. So I'm just going to chop up this red bell pepper. I don't mind saying I'm getting, I'm getting nowhere. Oh, really? <laughs> I think the brown sugar has been there for a fair amount of time. I think we had the brown sugar before we found 15. I think we did. <laughs> right. One of the tricks here with, the, with your peppers is, is never, you don't need to slice the whole thing up and get, you know, make a, a mess of it. All you need to do is just push in that little green stalk, pull out the, uh, the pips. And if you've got a little bit of pips in there, who cares? No, one, no one's worried about it. I'm just going to chuck it over there anyway. So it's absolutely fine. Uh, so I'm going to go down here. <laughs> no, they don't make it. Ill. They don't make it ill. You're fine. You got too many in there. I got a lot in here. I got a lot in here. I'm just going to put them in the bin over there. Right. Yeah. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to slice these bad boys up. You don't want to have really huge chunks. You want to have some quite small sli uh, dices. So I'm just going to work these, and um, and I'll just What's the difference get rid of that between, white um, stuff. Slicing and dicing. Then? Well, this is slicing. Dicing's in squares. So th that, that's kind of sliced at the moment, right? Slicing is pre-dicing, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's it's right, James. To Very good. And all I'm going to do is just, you, do, you can be quite rough with this. You don't need to kind of go into a lot of detail because it is going to break down and it's going to add that really nice sweetness into the, uh, into the dish as well. <laughs> can you show us what it looks like when you go into loads of detail with peppers? It it'll take me about half an hour to do them <laughs> properly. <laughs> right, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to start dumping all these ingredients in here and then I'm going to put it on, on, a, on, a, on, a, um, on a hob I'm going to cook them up for about, uh, for about 20 minutes just to get it up to a boiling stage. Now, the really key ingredient, more sweetness and a bit more smokiness, is your favorite barbecue sauce. Uh, so I've got, a, uh, I've got 300, um, 300 mils over here. I'm going to dump that in because we like, we like barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce is awesome. Um, you've also got, yeah, got, sauce, right? you've got the molasses going in now. If you don't have barbecue sauce, then you can probably use, what would you use? HP? You could use HP, but only a little bit. You only want to use probably about 100 grams, 100 mils. Marmalade. No more than that. Marmalade works really well. Uh, right, I'm just going to go in with all the rest of these yeah. ingredients here. <laughs> I mean, really, I should have uh, sauteed off the garlic with the onions, but I totally forgot to do that. So if you're doing this at home, make sure you do that. I'm going to go in with a uh, paprika, paprika when I just drop that. Paprika's uh, so going in. A few people asking uh, how your salmon was. Uh, it was we, um, it was sushi grade salmon, luckily, um, and uh, we actually cooked it off. I know uh, this is I know this is funny for James. It wasn't funny for me. I think there was something wrong with the coal. I think the coal got wet, or its parts was used by date, or it was bad logs, or something. But uh, but I had to cook it for another twelve minutes or so. Um, I had to add some more coal to the fire because it was a total disaster. But obviously, live TV allows for that, doesn't it? Okay, so, uh, onions. Um, my magic world is saying I ran our of brown. I'm assuming you said I ran out of our brown, <laughs> of brown and switched out for muscovado and it came out mega. Banging. Absolutely perfect. Like that. Now I'm going to go in with the meat because this is all veggie right now. So our cameraman Joe would love it as, at this stage. You can go for it. You can cook it as it is for those veggies out there. But we're not really a, a veggie household here. We are into our meat. I've got some burnt bacon. I overcooked it somewhat. <laughs> but <laughs> didn't think you guys oh. would notice. <laughs> I've got six rashes of bacon here. This is streaky smoked bacon that I've used. You can use whatever bacon you want, but ideally you want to just kind of crush it up in your fingers like this. Don't worry if you get big pieces. Don't worry about it if you get small pieces. It's all going to go down the same pipe. And I'm going to dump the, uh, I'm going to dump the, the bacon in here now. And then I've got about 400 grams of, um, of, of meat. So this, you can use your, like James said, you can use your chopped meat that you had from your Sunday lunch. Uh, well, it's Thursday today, so you probably don't want to do that. Uh, but I've got some, uh, some smoked pork ribs that I've, uh, I've, I've ripped the meat off the bones. It's about 400 grams in there, and that's going in. Again, it's nice to have big pieces, nice to have small pieces. Here, I'll show you a little, uh, a little close up here of Mick, how this whole thing Mick's goes. Mick's saying, uh, where did you get your fresh, ha fresh jalapenos from? Because he's really struggling to get any on a regular basis. I Great question. There you go, guys. Should be some in Morrison's. Uh, I think they've got them in the fresh, in the fresh aisle. They're like loose, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. J Speaking of loose, James at Warm Design says nobody wants loose juice <laughs> and bring on the meat. <laughs> and he also says crispy. Well, you know what? We, if there's one thing that we do, well, it's crispy because we've got the fryer going as well today. So I'm going to show you some nice crispy products in a bit. Right. That is your raw pit beans. Now, if you wanted to, 
you could put that straight in the oven. You really could. Uh, I'd probably put a little bit more juice in there uh, because loose when you, juice, loose juice, juice. Loose juice uh, if you're going to do that. And then I'd probably cover it for the first, probably first half an hour. But we're not going to do that today. We're going to put that on the hob and it's going to be on the hob for about 20 minutes. I'm going to bring it up to a simmer. And then I'm going to say, thank you very much for doing your job, hob. And then I'm going to open up the oven and I'm going to put it on at about 135 degrees, which I think is about, uh, that's Celsius, which I think is about 275 Fahrenheit. Put it in the oven, uncovered, if you put it on the hob and it wants to be in there for about an hour and a half. Now you wanna, you wanna uh, give it a stir every 15 minutes or so because it is gonna start kind of getting a bit claggy and, and catching on the edges, which is exactly what you want. But I'm gonna go over to the hob now and I'm gonna put it on there. You don't need to follow me if you want, jo uh, Joe, but I'm just gonna put it on here so we can start the process. James, uh, talk. Yeah, so um, pastry boy snaps. Uh, so mix, my, mix same, my mic isn't working for, I don't know, is it? Why don't you have a little reset? Well, I, I mean, I can hear it. Hang on one second, I'm just... Have a little reset. Can I? Oh, maybe yeah, he's, sounds like it is. Maybe like he's just working. testing you. Like uh, yeah, pastry boy snaps. Are you answering questions off here or Facebook? Uh, off Both. Here. Um, I ain't got Facebook on here. Oh. I uh, didn't have time to download. That is awkward. I'm sick of breaking that up. All right, thank you for that. Now, yeah. oh, uh, the rub. We need yeah. to put the rub in there. You Brilliant. Did. Well done. Told you. Just going to put two teaspoons. Two teaspoons of rub going in here. One and two. I'm going to go heat because I like flavour. Put a bit more in if you wanted to, if you wanted to test it out. You could do, but you, you, um, I think two, tea, two tablespoons will be absolutely ample for this. Right. It is looking really good, actually. Would you uh, you right. could add red kidney beans as well, couldn't you? Um, sometimes people put red kidney beans in there. We, as you know, cowboy, cowboys don't like red kidney beans as much as they do what? baked beans. They don't. It's a fact. We've met lots of cowboys. Uh, over Are the you last few years. Madness. No, they prefer baked beans. What do you think they put in the chili? Every cowboy I've spoken to hates red kidney beans and with spoken, a passion. And, and I've dealt with a lot of cowboys. <laughs> 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 and they know what they like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, so that's, uh, that's all those ingredients gone. Uh, we are going to come back with, um, when, we are, when we're doing some garnishing, um, I'm going to bring back uh, a little bit of a prep job here. So I'm just going to put my sour cream there, my coriander which James bought instead of uh, chives, go figure. So and then some green chili. So makes a good point that there's 100 people watching on Facebook. All right. And not that many on here. Uh, so I'll just go on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook makes sense. That's okay. I'll, I'll go between the two. So that's cooking. We like that. Uh, what I'm going to do here, guys, is just go through the ingredients uh, for our, our starter. Obviously, we've got the Doritos hanging here. We're waiting for the pit beans to cook. I'm going to show you how to be really creative with the, with the Dorito bags. Kids are going to love this. We've got uh, kids, uh, kids' small bags and then daddy's big bag. Yeah? You've got big bags, haven't you? <laughs> Relatively well-sized bag. Right, so, um, and also, don't forget, this is your rub, yeah? So you've made that rub. James, thank you for doing that. My pleasure. This goes in an airtight container in a cupboard, in a dark cupboard somewhere, and you can use that probably for the next eight weeks. It should take you up to the summer, and uh, we'll be using that again. So make sure you do have some of this in stock. When we, um, when we do our next uh, cook-off, or the next two or three cook-offs. Okay, uh, any yeah. questions before I go on to the frickles uh, and dirty sauce? Right, so, um, James Broughton says, I'm on first, so do I get a free meal? Yeah, all right then. Uh, Max McCarr says, I'm on second, I should get a dessert. Go on then. Who's counting? Ben Whelan, he's just said Mark Richardson, so he didn't get anything. Right. I'm on fourth, and I'm happy just to watch and drink IPA. Well, good on you, Mike. Uh, Matthew good job, Pruitt. good job. Uh, Pete Dolan says, volume up. Can we do that? I have yeah. no idea. Volume up, yeah, let's go. He's gonna to touch me, but I'm safe. We are living with each other now. That is super loud now. I'm doing a test. Can you guys hear me better now? Test, test, testing, one, two, three, four. These technical issues keep, keep coming up. It's ridiculous. I'm not. I'm just not I'm working not with professionals anymore. Or, uh, I'm, not, I'm barely even a restaurant, sir. You just gotta look after the talent, James. That's, that's, my, only, that's my only advice. Well, when it turns up. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, right. Okay, we're gonna go in with, uh, with some of the recipe uh, ingredients that you need for the frickles. Has anyone had frickles before? Yep. Can we have some yeses or noes? Yes, okay, right. Joe. Uh, Joe, you can have them, right? You're uh, you're a veggie, you're fine. So frickles are- We're gonna say anything, oh. never, Joe, because we're wanting some bants for- Come on, give us some bants, mate. Why are you uh, why are you not Why are you naked again? You why don't you just get dressed at like, like normal cameraman yeah, do? It's yeah. ridiculous. It's like getting close to the food. And it's really cold in here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. I don't know if you want to come in here, mate. Uh, just have a quick uh, a quick look, see. I'm gonna get my, uh, my recipe out of the way. Okay, uh, well, any other questions? Sorry. Um, let's have a look. So, Mark Haddleton, please, 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 can you blue open, open Red South, not London. Been a customer since week one. Don't get a chance to get up to Leeds, fortnightly. 
We'll do what we can. Um, a few things in the pipeline for us. Uh, is this the same basic rub as on Instagram? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, no, no. I've, I've, so that's the basic rub. But what I've done is I've added some additional, slightly different uh, yeah. ingredients to make it a, a rib rub. Okay. So that's your basic rub. And then with that basic rub, you can make pork rub. You can make beef rub. You can make chicken rub. You can make pork shoulder rub. Your Kel's watching. Oh, hi, Kel. She just right, got Kel. back from work. Hope you enjoy the fridge. Good. I gave her a fridge because... She doesn't have uh, a fridge. Nice one. <laughs> um, right, okay. Do you want to talk about these ingredients or not? Uh, yeah? yeah? I think we need to cover it. Okay, well, come on in then. Let's have a look here, Joe. So I, I, haven't, cracked up, uh, I haven't cracked open another beer for, for no reason. I have one there, but this is actually going to be used for the ingredients. So we're going to do some frickles, but today we're going to do it with a beer batter. Now, what you don't want to do is add a load of salt into your batter because these, Why things, is that? these things are already salted and they're already sour and absolutely beautiful. And they go really well with that kind of crunchy exterior that you get from the, uh, from the beer batter. The fry is on, I did remember to do it. So I'm gonna slice these up, but before we do that, in fact, James is gonna slice these up. Right. Can you do them yeah. into long pieces? You know what I mean, right? Not spears, because that's a bit too thick. Too kind small. of long, you want, the you want a shape like that. I know, but the guys at home, they don't know. Maybe, you, you can do them. You can do them in chips as well. So sometimes you buy them prepped. That's absolutely fine. But we like doing them in kind of that shape there. Uh, Jamie Grimshaw is saying how to do low and slow ribs. They always turn out tougher than I want. I'd say he's not doing them for long enough. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, you've got to wrap them. So I, I don't know if you guys are wrapping them at home. Um, you, you need to cook them for about half, the, like two hours. Then you need to take them off and, uh, and you need to hit them with a bit of apple juice and some, uh, some Worcester sauce. Um, spray them, you know, or, or a little squeezy bottle or something, and then wrap them in some, uh, some butcher's paper. You can buy butcher's paper on, uh, on Amazon now. It's like a peach, peach color. Wrap them really you good. You can use grease proof, can you? You can use grease proof as well. And then put them back in the smoker for the last two to three hours. Always get a temperature probe. Uh, you want to be hitting somewhere in the region of about 90, 92 degrees centigrade on, on those ribs. And when, when you hit that temperature there, and they've been kind of almost kind of, they've, they've almost been steaming inside that jacket. Uh, that's when you start getting a really tender rib. So make sure you, you crutch. It's called crutching. The Texas crutch doesn't sound very sexy. Well, it does. But, uh, but yeah, that's what it is. Wrap them. Make sure you wrap them. Okay, so I've got so some... Wrap them, yeah. Wrap them. I've got some really simple uh, plain flour here. No, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing extraordinary. No salt, but I am adding a little bit of pepper. Right? And then I'm going to go in... Oh, I dropped that one on the floor. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, I can hear it crunching away here. I'm going to go in with a bit of this. Uh, this, this is just a, a session IPA. Uh, you can use lager if you want, no stress. Uh, everything kind of works uh, when it comes to beers. You probably don't want to go for like a stout. I think a stout wouldn't really work, would it? Nah, I don't think so. Nah. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is make a batter. Nothing extraordinary. I didn't want to have to go through a whole process of making, you know, batters with cornmeal and, you know, there's, there's lots and lots of different, um, lots of different kind of um, methods to make it. Uh, make your batter lighter so you can use things like baking powder and bicarbonate of soda you don't need to because this has got fizz in it already right so you can see that starting to fizz up now already all right there we go you're gonna drink what you don't use i am gonna drink what i don't use i think i might have put too much in yeah. it's all right though more. you only want to slightly i oh, know it's thickening up nicely look at that there here we go but look at those bubbles coming up there joe can you see look at that money shot there mate oh tom watching. All right, tom. hi tom Nice to hear from you, mate. Declan Earl has tagged his mate, Sam Douglas. I wonder if uh, mm. we're related. Well, can you get me some more flour, please? I think yeah. I might have put a bit too much beer in you. That's uh, one of the benefits of, uh, of having... Um, me? You. <laughs> 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 yeah, you, this is probably too thick. Uh, you you kind of, it, it needs to be, this is more like a tempura, I would say, for doing it veg was veggies. It's really well though, wasn't it? So. Yeah. Well, I'll just go in with a uh, thank you for that. Cheers. Very gentle. Keep going, don't be shy. Yeah, that's that's the. I reckon that's probably about right. about fifty grams. Fifty three. Fifty three grams, is it? Right, there we go. It's starting to thicken up. Nice that. Yeah. Some more. Yeah, a little bit more. Thank you. Keep going. Don't be shy. Don't worry about it. It's uh, enough. There's too much now. Oh, for God's sakes! Um, if you um, if you get all the <laughs> if you get all these little. Um, Josh Montgomery's watching. Hello, Josh Mon. You're all right. There we go. Look at that. That's sticking up just lovely now. Listen, you don't need to make this perfect, guys, because if you start getting clumps of flour uh, into this, you start getting some really nice textures on your batter. So don't stress. Look at that. That's perfect. Yeah. Covers the back of a spoon. And, uh, and that's absolutely perfect. So you, you can let that settle uh, in the fridge. You can make this ahead of time. You know, if you want to do it in the, put it in the fridge for an hour or two or even the day before. Cousin Richard's on at White Gill. There we go. Look Thanks at that. Thanks very much. Okay, so 
That's looking good. And then all I'm going to do... What's the black bits? That's pepper. Oh, right. You can put things like herbs in there and, um, you know, if you want to put some, some extra flavours in there, you can, but you just don't want to overcomplicate it, really. Keep it simple. So you know me. Some people would have uh, rubbed the uh, pickles in flour. First. Yeah, you can do that. I'm just trying to keep it as simple as I can for, uh, for everyone at home. What, because that's really complicated? No, I just didn't want to. I just didn't want to make it complicated and keep it really, you know, keep it as simple as possible. Uh, here we are. That's what I need. Can you just give my uh, my pit beans a bit of a stir? I don't know if you want to go around and have a look at the um, the consistency of those beans as they start to simmer. I'm glad that you picked a pan with no handle. Yeah, I thought I'd booby trap you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has it worked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My fingers are getting sore. excellent. You get in, Joe. Look at that. So although that looks quite nice, the real magic is going to happen in the, uh, in the oven. But normally when these are in the smoker, we leave them there. And then when you come back to it, there's about an inch of this like thick, black, oily tar. And that is all the meat juices from all the beef and the brisket, the beef and the pork and the chicken and everything like that. All that's rendered out. And it, because we use rotisserie smokers, it all drips in. And it basically just drips in and goes into there. But a nice bit of meat in there now. All right, Joe, back around the front. Back around the front, please, mate. I'm just going to show you guys how to make some uh, some dirty sauce. Goes really well with these frickles. I mean, this is a little bit of a uh, it's a it's a bit of a cheat, really. But cheats work. We like uh, we like cheats. So Jamie Grimshaw is saying another question for you. Yes. What would you say is the best wood for smoking burnt ends or brisket? Tried several, but keen to hear. As you're the experts. I don't, think <laughs> Lovely. He's, uh, I don't think he's I don't think he's watched us before. He's obviously obviously knows what he's talking about. Um, do you know what? If you can if you can get some mesquite or hickory chunks online, uh, that's that is the best that's the best thing for it's doing brisket. Gone. Yeah, it is. Um, and you can you can buy chips as well. Chips are not brilliant because you have long smokes with uh, with burnt ends and, uh, and and brisket. So you want to get some chunks, probably you know about that big. I don't know how big that is, but. Uh, <laughs> Small, like chunks, yeah, not yeah, yeah. yeah, not logs and not chippings between the two. Uh, so I find that that, that that works really well. Uh, you can because they're slightly smaller, you, you can soak them in a little bit of water. Don't soak them in bourbon, which is the other question that we had uh, the other day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> bourbon and fire don't go together. Yeah, it's not cool. Um, but yeah, uh, and then you know just keep feeding the fire. Uh, the, the brisket and, and and beef generally only takes on the flavor of the smoke for the first kind of three to four hours maximum. Uh, so you don't really need to be putting on those expensive uh, hickory chunks or mesquite chunks later into the smoking period. Uh, just hit it really hard at the beginning. Hello to Mark Cato. Hello, Mark Cato. Nice right. to hear from you again. Mark, You're all right. Yeah. And uh, also, do you want to come and do a cocktail with us next week? Yes. yes. Do you want to do that? Do you come and come and do a cocktail with some of this food please, right, for we'll next see week? See what he says. Because he's uh, terrible at it. Neil, Awful. Neil Swinback. Uh, Swinback. Sorry, Neil and Jill looking good. Then mm. Barnard Castle. I know, it's Paul Colnut's uh, sister. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, how's Neil? You all right? Nice to hear from you. All right, come on, let's, let's do some dirty sauce. All right, I've got some mayo. Mayonnaise is always a good base for, uh, for a sauce that's going to go against a, a crispy fried product like, the, like our frickles. Mark Cato says, why not? Why not? Why not? Doing a, a wine cocktail, are we? Yeah, yeah. Lovely. All right, so I've got some mayo. I've got about two tablespoons of mayonnaise in here. I've then got a tablespoon of English. Mustard. You don't have to use English. You can use French's or you can use French if you want, but we like the flavor Why are you of English. With salt and pepper? I don't know, because you keep asking me if you don't have salt and pepper, what can you use instead? It's freaking oh, ridiculous. Uh, Colnut, son. Oh, hey, Colnut. You're right, mate. Nice to hear from you again, mate. Will and William Thomas oh. is uh, Will watching in Wakefield. Oh, oh, lovely. Everyone's on it today, aren't they? Uh, okay, I've got some red wine vinegar. There you go. Is that? No, that's not it. Yeah, that's red wine vinegar here. It's a t uh, one teaspoon of it. Just gives it that little zing. Just a little zing that you want. And then a teaspoon of Worcestershire uh, sauce. Nice. That one over there, Worcestershire sauce. And then I've got loads and loads of these little herbs. Now this is, you know, you can dump whatever you want in here, but you need some basics. <laughs> yeah, you need some basics. You need, uh, you need some salt. Aaron Miller is watching on Facebook as well. All right, Aaron. Hello, Aaron, you're right. So we've got salt, we've got ground coriander, got garlic powder, right. onion granules, paprika, yeah. else? oregano, and marjoram. And I'm just going to dump them all in. I'll just do it this way so you guys can see. So when we first started to make this, it had 28 ingredients in it, didn't it? It did, yeah. It was we probably too much. And we used to make it fresh every day in the stores. Every day. 
and every day it was completely different. Yeah, and then we had it made, and it's uh, now kind of, and it's in all the retail stores now, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it works out quite well. So you can see the color of that. Uh, the color of that sort of the um, of the mustard gives it that nice kind of yellow hue. I, hue. Think, you put, I think you put too much mustard on. Maybe too much mustard. Who knows? We'll taste it in a bit. I might have uh, might have booby trapped you again. Yes. There you go. That's your uh, that's your dirty sauce. It's a real cheats dirty sauce. But let me show you this. Oh, I guess it's Paul K's on saying, "Hey, up, boys, looking good." Hello, Paul. Drop me some bourbon in. There you go. So that's the dirty sauce. And then that's the dirty sauce there. So actually, the colours are not that dissimilar. I mean, it's quite yellow. It's quite yellow. It's because uh, the, it, this is a particularly yellow uh, mustard yeah. dough. <laughs> it's almost uh, neon. But anyway, you've got your dirty sauce ingredients there. So you yeah. should be really chuffed with that. Our Mick, uh, you know, Big Mick. Big Mick. Cousin Mick. Hello, Cousin He's Mick. On. Um, I can't say what he said because it's pretty Is rude. it rude? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there he is. And, uh, thanks, Bit Roland. Of blue. Roland loves the uh, sauces, so I do appreciate that. Aaron saying 31 caps till Christmas. I'm not, oh. I'm not gonna listen in any way, shape or form. That's awkward. Uh, stats on how many caps is till Christmas because he got it wrong last time. So. Right. <laughs> All right, <laughs> okay, this is looking good. I'm gonna take this off the, off the heat. Uh, Simon saying, what is the best thing to try in a gas cooker for a meat lover, but who's a disaster at cooking? So that a question Soup. again. So, <laughs> water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the question? Right, what is the best thing to try on a gas cooker yeah. for a meat lover, but a disaster at cooking. Well, you can do um, you can do indirect cooking on a on a gas cooker. Um, it's pretty easy. You buy a smoke box, a little smoke box about yay big. It's you got a lid. Your kitchen with smoke. No, you said. Oh, I thought you meant a gas barbecue. Wait, do you so mean you a gas said barbecue? It says a gas cooker. Can you just clarify whether you mean gas cooker or gas barbecue? Yeah, because uh, if it's a barbecue, you can do loads of stuff with, with indirect indirect yeah, cooking. Yeah. I think he's on about like a hob. Well, do you want to have a bet on it? Uh, yeah. I'm covered. Covered. Right, What's he saying? Is he saying well, anything? Please get back to us, Simon, because I've got a fiver on this. Ah, doesn't matter. In the meantime, yeah, we'll yeah. put that fiver on it there. Okay. So we've done with those ingredients. Happy with that. I'll come back to the uh, the dirty sauce, and then I'm going to put my freckles in here when they're done. Yeah. Um, I would like to say that the, the beans. In the kitchen. Thank you. Oh. Uh, I mean. It's just a hop. <laughs> it's just, you mean a hop? <laughs> uh, you were slightly a steak. A steak's always good. Uh, pull, just get a pork shoulder, <laughs> yeah. get a pork shoulder, put, put this rub on it, um, slightly less sugar, and put it in the oven for about, about six or seven hours on a really low setting, probably about 110, yeah. or 120, which is basically what we smoke at, 110 degrees centigrade, and, uh, and put it in there for six or seven hours, and then uh, pull it out, wrap it in cling, in, uh, cling film, don't do that, <laughs> <laughs> wrap it in tin foil, uh, with a little bit of Worcester sauce and apple juice in the bottom and then let it cook out another for another two or three hours and that will be absolutely wicked uh, yeah. pulled pork when it comes out the oven. So that's could, what you do. Or you could just do an omelette. Do an omelette or a steak. Yeah. Uh, Jamie Grimshaw's joke. Oh fine, okay cool. I'm just going to put this away. So we're saying if all I've got is a box of matches, can I do that salmon that you did? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's basically the level of heat that we were working with. So, who said that anyway? Oh, that was me. This is ah, right, yeah, yeah, I thought so. No one never be that cheeky. So, look, I want to apologise to everyone on Facebook because apparently the sound is pretty bad. Um, is it? We have, yeah, it's better on Instagram than it is on Facebook. Oh, another we have another bits, technical we're disaster. Trying. We're trying. I'm spending all my savings on. Uh, Another technical sound disaster equipment. from uh, yeah, yeah. from James. Well, yeah, this yeah. is. Uh, so I'm just putting. I'm just decanting this uh, this dirty sauce mm. into a. Such a good decanter. Thank you. That rhymes with something. Well, I tell you what, though, I'm glad you cleaned the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the only thing I could find. So when, All right. when Scott does stuff, he'll say, "I'll say, give it a clean." He'll go, "No, no, it's rustic." But for him, <laughs> rustic is just dirty. It looks cool. It looks cool. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go into. Um, we're going to do uh, the fry thing. We're going to go over to the fryer, Joe. Do you want to follow me over here, mate? And then uh, we'll do this. Have you we'll this bad on? boy. Yeah, I've, I've, I've turned it. I've moved. I've moved it onto a different hob. Right. And then that needs to, do you want to put that in the oven? No. No, leave it there for now, and then we'll put it in the oven in a bit. Well, Fine, don't worry about it. Just, just leave it there for now, and then I'll, basically what you want to do now is now that it's been simmering for about 20 minutes, you've got all those flavors kind of melding and everyone's having a party. Uh, you want to put it in the oven at 135 degrees, 275 Fahrenheit, and uh, you want to put it in there for like an hour and a half, okay? Give it a stir every 15 minutes. I've done one already, so that's going to come out when we finish doing the frickles. Um, right, frickles, here we go, this is what we do. Now, we, you, you can pané them, sorry Joe. You can pané them, which is you can, use, um, you can use flour and you can use egg and you can use all this type of stuff, but I just wanted to keep it really simple and go with a really simple beer batter. Beer, pepper, 
plain flour. So this could be a disaster. Okay, now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump the, uh, the, the basket in here. I'm gonna pick up a frickle, pick up a frickle. Get rid of all the excess, because we don't want scratchings. Oh, we do actually, let's go for some. And all I'm gonna do is just gonna leave it in there. Oh, now I'm gonna drop it. Why is it not doing, why is it? Oh, okay, we've got a start issue. We're gonna come back. We're gonna come back. Have you turned the fire off? You turned the fire off. We've got, the fire is not on. I think James has totally done me over. I can't believe you done that. Right, this might take, this is like salmon gate. This might take a little bit longer than we expected, but it's okay because we can talk about some cool stuff. This is actually, this is still quite warm anyway, so I reckon it's gonna come up in here. I can't believe you did that. Right, move out of the way, let me get this in here. I can't believe it. What a character. <laughs> right, come on in here. Have a look at this. I don't know if you've oh seen this yet. Dear. Let's do a little filler. Has, have you got any? Have you got any jokes, James? <laughs> You're cooking. Oh, I tell you what, yeah, don't. That's not good. Now, that? All right, there we go. I mean, guys, if you <laughs> no, leave it. No, Just, they take it out. All right, okay, yeah, yeah do that. Put it in. Oh, great, put it in a half baked. <laughs> Jesus. All right, it's going to come up to look at. It's starting to look. It's, look, that's a good sign. <laughs> That's a good sign. It's coming up in temperature. Yeah. All right, so guys, just as some advice, if you don't want to put this in your oven because you're like the chap who asked earlier on, if you've only got a, a, like a ring, a gas ring or an electric ring at home, What's you can cook like this. It's pretty burnt uh, and, and unkempt. <laughs> um, you can cook this out on here for about an hour at a really low heat, similar to the fryer. <laughs> Uh, for about uh, for up to an hour until it starts getting gloopy and the beans start to break up so you can cook it on the hob you don't need to put it in the oven but for the purpose of today I'm gonna pull out oh yes so I know this looks a little bit dry <laughs> and it doesn't look very appetizing but that's exactly what you want you can see it's it is a bit loose and it's starting to move around loosey goosey but you want that you see that that kind of it's, it's, it's almost a, a total it's almost a bean bark it's a bean bark on the outside you want that to happen you want those beans to start breaking up as well okay so that's going to come to the uh that's going to come back over here when we're doing our um we're doing our building in a minute just put this in here because actually i don't want to waste these i do want to cook them off and then just put that at the bottom of the oven 135 Hour and a half, done. And put this back up to 135 actually. Right, do you want to come over here and you can have a look inside? <coughs> so, start and cover. Oh my god, that's exactly what you want. See that there? Get in there, more. Get in there, Joe. That's what you want. That, you want that gloopiness. Yeah. That's what you want. That's going to go on top of those you also doritos. Want to scrape all that stuff off the side. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a bad boy. The flavor. It's like stock beans. That stock. is a bad boy. There we go. That oh is my god. Food porn. I can hear that music. It like is. It's, <laughs> it's slurping. It's it slurping. Is. All right, cool. I think so the fryer might be okay now. They been in there? Uh, they've been in there probably two hours now. So right. uh, an hour and a half is all you need. But I turned the volume down on the, on the, on the oven. But so you can also add a bit more sauce if you think they're a bit too dry, couldn't you? As long as you just water. water. Yeah, just a little bit of water just to loosen it up. Try to sell sauce here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Put loads of barbecue sauce yeah. uh, in there if you can. Yeah. Oh, you can get in all, all, all retailers. All major retailers. <laughs> right, let's see if this is going to work. I'm so sorry for that. I think you did that. I didn't. Because I remember working with us earlier and I didn't turn that off. I know you did it. Because we had the chicken wings earlier, didn't we? And I think you I don't know. It I'm not sure about this. Right, I'm going to put the basket back in. I don't think it's going to pass a lot. You don't think it's ready? I don't think it's ready. I think it's going to be ready. I don't know why I did that. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what, though. I nearly had an embolism there, didn't it? Let's have a look. Okay, no, it's it's not, it, it's not quite hot enough. You're right. You need to fill. Just fill. gonna wait. What else are you gonna Just gonna wait. Uh, I've got another. I've got another barbecue jug. Uh, go on then. What do you call a, a group of uh, a group of guys waiting to get their haircut? Barbecue. Barbecue. You said that last week. That oh, but I thought they were new new viewers. No. Oh, same guys. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> Sorry guys. Ah, oh, damn it. Why do you put that one back in there? That is going to be doubly well, horrible. All right, okay. So listen, you need to get your, uh, your fryer up to temperature before you do any uh, of this, yeah? So let's just fill with something else. Let's do it right. No, it's done now. What Tell you now, we, watch. Should we give them... Here you go, watch. It's, it's not there ready. it is. Yeah, look, look, no, look. No, it look. isn't. It isn't. Look. Take it out. Look, there. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Okay, I've dumped one. I'm going to go in. I think you've... I'm going in. Literally undercooked it there. No. They might get caught, the, they get stuck on the bottom, but that's fine. You just, you don't want to... Um, you don't want to let that, uh, that uh, oil splatter at you. You want to kind of throw them away no from you them. like that. That didn't really work either. Okay, I'm just going to go in now because this is really hot. I think you might, it might be over, like overheated a little bit. <laughs> we'll put it down together. Here we go. Oh, 
there we go. Got a nice crack. There we go. We're good. We got some. Uh, we got some of these. What are they call those scratching things that you get from the fish and chip shops? Oh, bits. Bits. Oh, fish bits. Scraps. That's it. Scraps. I think they call them bits in London or down south. Oi, oi. Scraps. In, uh, oh yes. There we go. Oh, I've made a mess. So is my arm getting in the way here, mate? No, you're golden, yeah. All right, cool. Unlike your uh, okay. face. Right, there we go. How many, how many got you? How many did you slice? Uh, I got about Done. ten. All right, we can go. We can go with that. I'm just gonna have a little tidy up here because I don't like uh, too much of a mess. It does get a bit warm around there. So what? Um, <coughs> while we're waiting for those. One seventy-seven. 177. 177. That's what you want, temperature so wise. Waiting for those, what, what are you being cooking at home? When uh, 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 a lot of been doing a lot of barbecues. Right. A lot of barbecues. Right, what? Um, what are you making? Well, I do a lot of a uh, lot of lamb for me. My wife doesn't eat lamb, so right. she'll have a pork. She'll have a pork steak yeah. or a pork chop. Pork sword. Pork sword is uh, that's a, on a different show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> again. <laughs> oh hello. You can come have a look at these now. Move out of the way. Social distancing and all. And then what you want to, oh, the ones that are stuck at the bottom, that's not what we want. Okay, you want to give them a little bit of a flick over, because otherwise the batter cooks just on one side. Starting to go, uh, see, you don't need flour, you don't need to panne and do all this kind of stuff. Right. You can just right. literally right. put them straight right. into a really simple... Tom Darlison's watching. Hello, Tom. Oh, that's broken. That's uh, not Paul good. Paul says, keep blowing it up and you two get smashed. I think, <laughs> I think we need our wits about us at the moment to try and get this. Fry. Yeah, around a fryer might be a bit tricky. Uh, but no, I think they're starting to take shape nicely. The colours getting there, the, the, the oil's a nice clean oil. That always makes a big difference. Oh, Cameron says, I remember meeting you to download you were awesome dude, so I really appreciate oh, that. Thanks, Cameron. That's so kind of you, mate. Didn't meet you. Was that when, when we were sober? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that one that well. Doing the low and slow smoked fish fingers. Oh. Yeah. So it's like tempura, but with beer. Correct. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, you're not using sparkling water; you're using beer. Right. You got it. And we ha we have a sl we are we've had a slight disaster right, here. That's the one. That's, the one. that's yeah, the one that you chucked in earlier on. Like that's your that's your contribution <laughs> to today. You know that. <laughs> All right, these are looking good. We got another thirty seconds on these bad boys. Right. How do I know that? Uh, I, know. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly made you met up. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. just look like they need about 30 seconds. They look good though. I reckon they're going to be banging. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so are you going to eat these? Are you going to eat these really hot? Uh, I might as well. Uh, what would you have with these? What we, what drink would you have with these? Me, I'd probably have a lemonade. Lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> Such a pussy. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, um, if I was drinking, I mean, yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, what's oh? oh. I drink oh, don't I? Drink, that's oh, <laughs> well, let's see it, Kato. I'd what? have a nice. You what? know what? I'd have a really, I'd have a nice lager. What I'd would Kato? Nice crisp lager. Let me see what Kato. Yeah, Chris Lager actually. That's a good call. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. would Kato have with these? Did I say that Tom Dallas was watching? I did. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Tom. Right, Mark Kato. If you're still there, are you still there? Tell us if you're still there. Uh, what would what would you drink with these? Mark Kato is a bit of a drinks expert. He's a alcoholic and a yeah. wino. Tom Cockle. <laughs> Uh, some proper lids on the show here, chaps. I think he's on about you. Lids? Lids, your lid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've just had a shave today. I've braved it again. I know, but if you look at that, it looks like you're completely bald. Wow. <laughs> I look like a patient. <laughs> that is not great. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I sh I sh we should change the color of these lights up here. So, Mark is still watching. And Mark said he'd have a whiskey sour with Bosaw. Oh, boom. He's nailed it. Has he? Yeah. I'm he's totally nailed it. Bosaw, not the, not the saw. Uh, no, I don't think that's an actual saw. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good call. That right. I think we're done now, mate. You can go. You can go round again if you want. Excuse me. Go on then. I'll see what people are saying. Uh, yeah, Tom. Tom Cockle. I'm gonna go at the. Uh, I'm gonna go at the haircut. Yeah, I know. Well, it's not really the haircut. It's more the. Uh, it's more the the hair or the lack of. So my magic always is: how do you stop the clacginess when you cook them in the smoker? What's this for? Oh, it's, uh, it's the pit beans. So they don't go claggy in the smoker because obviously in the oven there's nothing dropping down on it. But in the in the smokers, all the meat's going round and all the juices are dropping off. So you end up with like an inch and a half of this like barbecue grease, which is dead nice. Yeah, no, you do. They don't. Yeah, they. I mean, also you, you can also you can thin out the um, you know the the beans over time. You know you can add a little bit of water to it. You can actually chuck some beer in it as well if you are doing barbecue. And beer's always a good way to control things. Mick's gone rogue and said he could substitute the pickles for Indians' fingers. 
it, that's Indian finger chilies. Indian finger chilies. <laughs> <laughs> slightly inappropriate, yeah, Mick, as which, always. <laughs> which reds are you cooking from? Don't recognise your surroundings. That's Muckman Movies. This is actually our office. Uh, it is. Movies. Yeah, it is. Yeah. All right. So listen, we're right, going to start. Uh, yeah, it's our it's our head office. It's a little bit of a we built a little studio just in case. Just in case we needed it. Right, your frickles are there. I don't know if you want to have a little try of them bad boys yeah, yeah, yeah. or not. Where's my dodger? Uh, I've left it there, it just doesn't look very appealing. <laughs> right, I'm going in. Get some of that. Yeah, way too much mustard. <laughs> You've not even tried it. Alright, it's so hot. They're good. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Right, where's that spoon I mean, going? That is hot, That's there. That is really hot. Is it? Yeah, I mean, just like temperature, <laughs> not spicy. Let's have a little try. Yeah, I think there's too much mustard. Let's have a try. I've got left mustard. Oh. Learning from the pros. Oh, that's really good though. A different one. Did you double dip? You can go back in. No. I'm new to double dip. I mean, I can't go back in now. Yeah, you can. Right. Guys. I'm a bit off in my teeth. Next thing. I'm going to show you guys how to create um, something quite interesting and quite fun. This isn't just for the kids at home. It's also for the parents. Um, but... <laughs> If you wanted to, you could give kids Is it that good, an alternative to Chili Heat Wave, James. <coughs> chili Heat Wave and kids oh. don't always mix, so I think you got the colours wrong. But I'm going to show you guys how to make a really fun dish with your beans. You can have your pit beans as a side, or you can have them as a main. Got some scissors. We're having them as a main today. Uh, I was just going to just going to use a knife. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just going to go for a knife. All right, uh, uh, Elliot Campbell's watching. All right, Elliot. All right, All Elliot. Right. How's it going, mate? And uh, the big man, LG, Liam Grogan. Oh, wonderful. Are you not going? No, I'm going to go this way. What? Yeah. Well, why don't you do one? Get your scissors. Why don't you do one? And I'll do one as well. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to just create a little a little hole. I'm going to get rid of some of that, that moisture in there so I can control. What I want to try and do is, is make a slice along that line over there. And then I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to put the pit beans inside of there oh, wow. with, some, uh, with some garnish. So I'm going to put some sour cream, some coriander, and a little bit of chili as well. And that is going to be my vessel for eating my pit beans. It's amazing. They call it frito pie in America. It's quite famous. We've called it Dorito Apparently, pie. Apparently, um, Chrissy Teigen and um, what's that dude called that she's with? The singer? Oh, I have no idea. I'm not really up with all this stuff. What are you doing? That's ridiculous. What are you on about? Looking at it, it curls back. No, 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 no. It even curls back. No, 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 no. No, that's. I've made a plate. You've made. <laughs> you've made a platter. But this is yeah, this a, is a frito you pie. Mini nachos in there, do you? No, you don't. But that's what you want. See that little pocket that I've created there? Quite fun, a fun little pocket to play with. Katie Babbles on, all right, Katie. Hi, Katie. She's oh, asking are. if you haven't got uh, Doritos, could you use Monster Munch? <laughs> you probably can. I'd be, the pickled onion ones would be really good, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice call. I like it. Okay, so we're going to do that, and then uh, we're going to do one for. Mine looks garbage. I told you, you, got, you don't listen to me. I know, but I was thinking more like practicalities. Yeah, yeah but we don't do practicalities here. I just don't we do what's going to be good. I want to take mine off. So all I'm going to do is go along that one. I'm going to put mine over here in the, in the shame corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that one there. Just get rid of this little piece here. Don't need that. Chris Bart says, is this just a roll call of your mates? Uh, yes, uh, basically. Yeah, <laughs> Everyone's in lockdown. Everyone's bored. So Mark Fowler is saying Doritos, no, with 15 zeros. We want real wow. Tex-Mex chips and salsa, and then I'll have take up residence. Well, I mean, we've got that. Well, not now. I'm not going to do it now. Yeah, but we could do that. We can't. We can't. Uh, we can't appease everybody. Okay, there you go. So that's that's going to be a bad boy for your your daddy, and that's going to be for the kids. Got loads. If you wanted to have a party. Yeah, there's a few there. There you go. You could do that as well. Just gonna have a little uh, little beer before we get into the really hot stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, could do me a favour. Oops. Yeah. Can you slice up that chili there, please, and also the um, the what's the name as well? How do the you coriander. Uh, just long slices, please. Uh, Thank you. All right. So here comes the uh, here comes the chili. Microphones are playing up a bit. Tell you oh, what, again. Yeah, no, Done with it. Done with these microphones. Okay, do you want to come in here, mate? I don't know if you want a little close-up of this. This is the fun bit. Oh, yes. Get some of that in there. It's a great little festival uh, festival item, this one, I reckon. Okay, so that's just going to, that's going to be ready now for, uh, in a second, just for, uh, for some garnish. 
Oh, lordy. This is going to be a monster. I'm going big. Oh, yeah? Yeah, doing it. <laughs> what an animal. 